join with you this morning for this awesome session with tools for online learning. Since we're all living in the land of the webinars and the online meetings, just like we are at this very moment, I'm so glad you chose to invest in yourself and set this time aside to be able to gather more tools and tips and encouragement in this online journey. So share with us, if you don't mind, open us up. Share with us where you are joining us from today in our chat box over to the left. I will start you out. I am joining you from Selkirk, Manitoba today. It is nice and overcast today, but bright, bright sky, albeit cloudy. And where are you joining from today? The chat box is located just on the left side of the screen. If you don't automatically see a chat area up here, there's a little arrow that you can click on to the left and it will expand your chat area. I see some of you are finding it already this morning and so glad. Hello from Thompson and from Dauphin and St. Clements already have joined in. This is beautiful and St. Andrews, I'm loving it. Thank you everyone for joining us from all around our awesome province. I want to also encourage you to visit the top of your screen. So just above this section where the video is showing, you'll notice you have some buttons there. One is the chat emoji button or the emoji button. So it looks like a happy face. Go ahead and show me that you found that tool. Choose any emotion, any emoji that you want. And as you'll notice, it just floats across the screen for us. Thank you, Dana. 5,000 points for Dana for being first. Paula's coming in with a little 1,000 points for being second. And let's see if everyone else can find that emoji button up top. So Kathy and, and everyone, go ahead and use that all throughout the session today. As Carrie is teaching us and showing us new content, it's a great way to be able to react and interact. Although you don't have your microphone and camera on, this is a way you get to share in the learning. And certainly it's a big boost for the instructors as we go and, and realize that people are there despite the fact that we can't get to see you as we wish we could. So today, tools for online learning. Throughout the session, you may find that you have a question or two for the instructor. And we will leave some time for that near the end where we will go ahead and accept questions. So up above this video screen again, you see a thought bubble emoji and that will take you into the question area. If you type a question in there, it comes to me privately and then I can share that with the instructor for her to address at the end of our session together. Now we are super excited we could join in together and we want to get to know you just a little bit. So we may know a little bit about you from your registration, but not a whole ton. So we'd love to be able to find out what's your starting point today with us. What's your perspective coming into this workshop? So you'll notice in the chat I've popped in a form that has a little survey attached to it. Go ahead and click on that link in the chat area and you'll notice it'll open up a separate tab for you. I ask you to go into that tab now, take a few moments to complete that survey and I will be silent for a few moments, give you a chance to do that and then we will jump right into our content. Okay, thank you for those who did complete the survey already. I will go ahead and put it fresh again in the chat because I noticed we had a couple learners. Oh, let's, that's the wrong one. <laughs> let's get the right one and I will put it in there for you. We had a few people who weren't able to join us right at the starting time and so they're not aware of what we're doing. So welcome those of you who are joining in. Just at this moment, I want to let you know in the chat we've posted a survey for you to complete. It's an important part of our training and at the end we'll also ask you some similar questions. And if you could take a moment in a private or in a separate tab to go ahead and do that, um, it sure will help us 
with our content today and in the days ahead. So you, of course, know that you signed up to join us with Workplace Education Manitoba. We are all about helping people to develop essential skills needed for work, learning, and life. And really the vision behind that is that every Manitoban would have access to essential skills, knowledge, and training. And as you consider what those are, you'll notice ahead that it's the kind of essential skills we have to do for our entire lives. Of course, all of our training is made possible by incredible partnerships. And if you want to use that emoji button right above the screen you're viewing, you'll be able to give an emoji thanks to Employment and Social Development Canada and Manitoba Education and Training, and also the partnership with Human Resources Skills Development Canada and Entrepreneurship Training and Trade. Yay! Big emojis for our funders and partners that make all this possible. Of course, our flagship website is wem.mb.ca, and we also encourage you to visit us at weminterlake.ca, and that way you can see what kind of workshops are coming up next for us. In our mission to get these essential skills into the hands of every Manitoban, we, we do it a number of ways. One, of course, is learning about your essential skills and increasing your skills with something like today, being able to do a lot of the online training that we have coming up. And of course, WemInterlake.ca shows you a whole host of workshops that you can sign up to take from the comfort of your own computer. We also have West Centers, so Workplace Education and Skills Training Centers, all around the province. There's probably one within driving distance of where you live. Certainly for those who shared in the chat where you're joining us from today, I did notice you are very close to a West Center in your area. And there we do everything from one-on-one -on -one career assessments to customized learning plans for whatever essential skills you want to work on. And it's a really cool program for any adult because they get to chip away on their learning goals in a real customized way. And then finally, we also do workplace training. So did you know a trainer can come right to your workplace and work on essential skills customized for what you're experiencing in your work environment. So that's an opportunity you don't want to miss and I really encourage you to reach out to us um, even here in the chat if you want we can send you information about that and you'll notice in the chat at the very bottom there's an option where it says send to. Your default setting is set set as send to all, but you are able to use that drop down arrow and choose Workplace Education Manitoba. And in that way, you'll be able to send me a private message and I can provide any support and help that you need as we pursue our training today. Now, we'd love to talk about what the nine essential skills are. And here's what they look like as an image. Reading, writing, document use, who doesn't use those for your workplace? Digital literacy, numeracy, and oral communication, those are day-to-day, -day, every day, in almost every task we're doing in our workplace. And then, of course, working with others, thinking skills, and continuous learning, which is even what we're doing today. <laughs> so you can see that those nine essential skills are the pieces we never get to graduate from because they're in everything we do, despite our industry and the type of work we do. Now you didn't sign up today just to hear me talk about how great Workplace Education Manitoba is. You also want me to talk about how great Carrie Mealy Holmes is. And Carrie is our instructor for today. She believes that curiosity is the foundation of learning and that learning is what helps us to become who we were meant to be. Carrie has over a decade of experience. I know once you see her, you'll find that absolutely astonishing. But she's been at this for quite a while, understanding that building trust and creating environments where people feel safe to engage and safe to ask questions is really what brings awareness to her participants' learning. Carrie is constantly striving to build wonderment and wellness in others, and that's what brings her passion in her work and in her life. Carrie herself is a continuous learner, just like you signing up for this workshop today. Carrie is continually digging in, learning, reading, growing, and expanding her skill set. Now what's exciting about her sharing with us today is that she has a background in broadcasting, which includes years of coaching and instructing online. She was ahead of the online 
thing before it was a thing last year. She's been doing this for years. And you'll appreciate that her animated online delivery style keeps learners engaged. On top of that, she makes so many connections through storytelling, and real life experiences that keep learners coming back for more. Now we want to invite Carrie to join us. Please join me, Carrie. But for you all, you have a job. Please, could you use your emoji button above the screen that you see now and give us a warm welcome. There's an applause button to welcome Carrie Mealy Holmes. Thank you for being with us, Carrie. The platform is all yours. Thanks, Rochelle. Holy, like, wow. We all need a Rochelle around to be a great cheerleader. Thanks everybody for being here today and with this topic. Um, many of you have attended our sessions and for that we're very, very thankful. I was curious, find out what you have learned from becoming a remote learner. Right? We've been taking the, the training on the onlines and our meetings. What have you found so far? What have you learned? So if you could pop into the chat just let me know something that you've learned about yourself or even about the tech in becoming an online or remote learner. <laughs> 100%. Yes, I find myself squirreled away in a small office today for that very reason. There's not a whole lot going on in this room. <laughs> yeah, no distractions. Flexibility and patience, oh my goodness, so true. Need to take care every day, even though we may be working from home, we still need help with the littles. Mm -hmm. I can do it, even <laughs> if I think I can't. Thanks, Kathy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Selena, so true, right? To be able to have no distractions. I think that's one of the greatest downfalls in our society right now is the amount of information that's being thrown at us can actually act as a distraction instead of something that's useful to increase our own capacities. We've learned a ton. So this is one thing, especially comfortable with everybody here today. Things that we've learned, um, the power of the emoji, who knew? <laughs> that little hand clap across the screen, the heart eye emoji, whatever, sad face, all of them, yay! <laughs> For us as facilitators, this is something, a way for us to connect, especially in this platform where we, you know, we don't have that microphone ability when we, when we share this uh, webinar platform. However, coming up shortly, we will be kicking us out of here, in, out of our any meeting, and our sessions will be shifting over to um, another platform called Pla Blackboard Collaborate. Yay! And so some of you may have had that opportunity already with us to, to visit, um, collaborate, but it will be a little bit different than our, our beautiful any meeting. We don't have the bouncy emojis across the screen that I'm aware of, um, although we do have a plethora of them in the chat. So that will be something for us as we, we shift over to that platform and we'll have some heads up on that. I know, right? I've also learned about myself that I have become a walking emoji. Instead of saying, oh, that's so sad, I do this. Anybody else speak an emoji language now? <laughs> Single tear. I'll even say it if someone's like, yeah, this really, you know, unfortunate thing happened. And I'm not talking like my dad, but you know, like they went to go pick up their favorite cheese and it wasn't available. What do I do? Oh, that's so sad. Single, <laughs> Single tear emoji. The other thing that we found was the power of a PowerPoint. One thing when we're in a workplace with you in person, and some of you I've been in your workplace, we didn't even use a PowerPoint, did we? And so um, in other times we've used a PowerPoint just as a couple of points on a screen, usually words, not a ton of visuals, but learning uh, online, well, we need to keep you engaged, right? So we try to put up cool pictures. And Rochelle found this amazing thing, a little picture here on fonts, and that fonts matter. And so again, for, for ease, for accessibility reasons, we try to keep our fonts very simple and very clean. Hashtag fonts matter, big time. So if you look at this one, you'll always be mine, versus you'll always be mine. 
super creepy. So we have learned a ton, and never mind the tech, we'll get into that as well. Here's the thing, I wanted to discuss today about being a good online learner. Um, and as an online learner myself, I learned a lot from preparing this and, you know, had my, I don't know, hand slapped a little bit maybe, <laughs> recognizing some of the terrible things and how I could be a better online learner, even though I live in the online world all day, every day. The truth is we attend training programs for all sorts of reasons. Maybe we're here to upgrade skills, learn new things, Perhaps we're taking a longer term training session, maybe we're changing careers, or even earn an advanced degree. I have several friends, Rochelle included, who are working on advanced degrees and attending in university, even as older, well, not that old, sorry, Rochelle, <laughs> as adults, as wise adults, um, and going back to school. One friend of mine, she has seven children, the youngest are twins, so that's kind of fun. And they are five, so they're in kindergarten now. So now she has time to finish up her degree, and it's been really exciting to see her be enthusiastic about learning again. She's really smart. She's like a mathematical engineer. Right? So I always thought if we had like a compound of the zombies game, I would teach her kids mindfulness and yoga, and she could teach my kids math. <laughs> you need one of those in your back pocket, guys. So my question is, what are you doing to be a continuous learner? What are some of those things that you do? And maybe you don't even think about it, just something that you do naturally. Webinars. Does anybody do any um, reading outside of work, whether online or books? I think if I had some of my books with me that I'm reading today, I have one. This is a great book, friends, Richard Wagamese, Embers. So this is a really good book for my yogi side right and my seven teachings side i love the seven sacred teachings of our grandfathers and so there's just different things different ways that we can be a continuous learner as michelle pointed out that's one of our seven or sorry nine essential skills so many numbers now usually we're here to improve a skill or learn something new but what determines how much you learn and how successful the training is it's often the effort that you put into it. And I know for myself that that has been a total truth. I get in or I get out what I put in. And it's important for us to think about this question that maybe in the past we thought of in kind of a selfish way. What's in it for me? So sometimes I will ask a question and why don't I just go ahead and ask it to you right now? Why are you here? What was it about this topic that brought you here today? What are you hoping to gain? I think it's an important question to ask ourselves anytime that we are embarking on a new training. Now, granted, this is just a one-hour webinar. However, you've set this side of time for a reason. So thinking about that, every time we go into a session, what's in it for me? What am I hoping to gain? Yes, something, tips or tricks to help me or to teach others. Yeah, making it worthwhile, paying attention of what I need to do. Thank you both for those things. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Help your homeschooling? Definitely. Well, some of those things, you know, it's important for us to think about what am I hoping to gain, like you said. We'll certainly learn some skills, right, to do your job better, but are there any other benefits? One thing as facilitators, so we're kind of giving you like the insights here. We set performance objectives for our sessions. And in fact, in the workbook, there will be learning objectives. What we're hoping 
as facilitators that you'll be able to gain from our sessions today. And it's kind of a cool thing to do. We use verbs um, with those objectives. And so maybe it's create, list, name, <laughs> all of these types of words. So some of you, sometimes it's important for us to set our own objectives. So considering the following questions, will it advance reputation and expertise? Will successful completion of the program affect things like compensation, project assignments, promotions? Will you gain self-confidence? That's something that I hope we will all gain today, self-confidence as learners. Will the training improve your current performance? Will it open new opportunities for you, or will it give you a new confidence that you need? Will it provide necessary credentials or credibility in your field? So sometimes, like this session, we're not going to walk away with a diploma or a certificate, but will it improve our current performance? I'm hopeful, right? Will it improve credibility? Probably, right? Because some of the things we're talking about today will help us to be better learners. We really want to be able to make the most of our training time. So this will mean, as you are doing, taking an active role in your learning. And in doing so, we are taking responsibility for our learning. Now, I have a, a comment I'm going to make, and the truth is I could argue both sides of this any day of the week. I once heard, though, someone say, well, I didn't learn anything because the teacher sucked. Has anybody had this? Have you ever heard this? And the truth is sometimes our teachers are less effective if they're not reaching us in the way that we need to be taught. So that's one thing as a teacher that can be a challenge, right? Especially online. Are our learners kinesthetic learners? Are they visual learners? Well, let's hope so. Are they auditory learners? Oh, yeah, let's hope so. But what am I doing as an adult to take responsibility for my learning? Is it seeking out the right learning opportunities? Am I taking an active role in my learning? So it's kind of funny how, again, speaking from experience, sometimes when I'm in training, I've dedicated, you know, from five to nine for this course, but what am I do doing during that time? Online shopping, texting with my cousin, right? checking up on, the jets, I don't know, right? Or are we taking this time to be hyper focused? Now, in our session this morning, a couple of you were there, we talked about, you know, eliminating some of those open tabs that we have in our computer so that we're not distracted by notifications, turning off notifications, this sort of thing, so that when we are where our feet are. So, my cousin, I have a new cousin, my cousin got married, so we got a new cousin, and he says, be where your feet are which works great when we talk about body language as well, but that's a whole other discussion. <laughs> if I'm in a training, I'm in a training. Okay? If I'm in a conversation, I'm in a conversation. And so being where our feet are so that we're making the most of the training and trying not to be distracted. Hello. Yes. So what do we do to make sure that we are focused in an online training? What are some of the things that you're already doing to help keep that focus. Hmm. Write things down, take notes, turn cell phone off, turn off other monitors, right? If some of us have a bunch of monitors. Um, which is really nice to have, by the way. It's so dreamy. But turn them off. Minimize them, whatever we need to do, so that we're not distracted. Even if you have your phone out, right? Making sure, like you said, that it's off, turn down, put in a bag, so that we're not distracted. Mm -hmm. These are brilliant ideas. Thank you. Another thing we can do is to ask questions, participate in the session. So we have our chat going on. Again, thank you for that. Or forums, or even when we shift over to Blackboard, collaborate. We just call it collaborate, by the way. 
um, you'll have an opportunity to have your mic on. So if you don't have a mic, maybe you want to get one. Because <laughs> it'll be a great way for us to interact. And for some of you, maybe you're in these, um, I know Zoom has capabilities. A lot of the different platforms have breakout rooms and things like that where we can have a focus group and, and yeah, and really participate in that way. And absolutely, Rochelle, so important to participate. Thank you for this tip. Staples and others sell microphones you can just plug into a USB port on your computer. And oftentimes, the mics are pretty good quality considering it's just a USB port. So if that's something that's missing on your computer, which we've come across um, in different workplaces, workplace training that the tech just isn't there. So then we have some people on mic, some people not, and then it creates kind of this imbalance. So spoiler alert, we will be moving to that platform. So if you can grab a mic, that would be great. Participation gives you a voice. Right? It gives you that opportunity to express your ideas and get immediate feedback. And we know this to be true, that we often learn from the students as much as you can from the trainer. In our case, um, well, I can only speak for myself, but I, I'll speak for Michelle or whatever, right? I feel like we are more facilitators of a conversation. We are presenters of ideas, and then what we love is this collaboration with you so that we can learn from your experiences as well. But we can learn from a book, definitely. We can read an article, 100%. But the value in training comes from the interaction with our participants as well as our facilitators. I agree, learners learn the most from other participants. Yes, thank you for all the points. Oh, can I redeem them for a gluten-free pizza maybe? <laughs> now. Like we were saying, it gives the opportunity to learn from our colleagues and peers while also giving us a voice. Now, one thing that happens, well, it's happened to me. As a learner, I have like all these brilliant ideas. <laughs> and so here I am, the, the teacher is going on and I'm, I'm typing away, I'm furiously like trying to get it in. Oh, I spelled that wrong, that's the exact thing. And then just as I'm about to hit send, they've gone on to a new page. Right, sad face emoji insert. Here's the thing, when you're with us, still send it. Even if it's like 15 slides later, bring it up. We want you to have a voice. And so there may be those times, and it's interesting, um, in any meeting, in the meeting section, we're in webinar section, you can see that someone is typing away. I'm in a session on Mondays with some folks, and I called them out on it yesterday, I'm like, um, I can tell that you're typing and now no message has turned up and then the happy face laughing emoji comes in and then they'll pop on their mic and say, well, it was getting too much to type in. And so we can still have voice. And so please, please, please still share with us. I know. <laughs> or a T. Yeah, okay. 10,000 points for a T sounds good. <laughs> now here's a hot tip. There may be times we are distracted. Okay, let's rewrite that sentence. Let's be honest. Let's get rid of there may be times. That was me softening it. We are distracted, okay? Or we may be, is it right now? Yes. Now, because I'm now I'm thinking about T, right? Let's reset. So we may be distracted or feel that the content doesn't apply. I've been in those sessions. And I'm like, why do I, what am I doing here? Like, how does this apply to me? And then the other thought comes in, you are a continuous learner. So tuck away the knowledge, even if you feel that it doesn't apply, and know that at some point you may need to recall and apply the teachings you have learned. Or you'll find yourself in a conversation and be like, well, actually, according to this recent project, blah, 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 right? Your brilliance can shine, even though you're at the time, you're like, how does this actually apply? Now, this sounds kind of braggy, so take it for what it is. If the course designers, who are subject matter experts, who research and take time to develop things, believe that information is relevant enough to present, it's probably something you should know. 
that's one thing we probably, I hope righteously pride ourselves on at WAM is that we're providing you information for a good purpose as we build on those essential skills. My value, one of my values is to not waste time. Well, waste your time. I'm really good at wasting my own time. But I never want you to feel that you walk away from a session going, well, that was a big fat waste of time. So hopefully there's a nugget, there's a connection, there's something that a participant said, right? There was a question asked that helped us to learn something new, different, or to confirm prior knowledge. Now I have for you a quick online survey to find out what type of learner you are. And so we'll just pop that into the chat. Look at that magic. And there's just a few quick questions. Cute colors, nice font. So hop on over and then come back in and just type done in the chat once you've completed. Thank you. What does it mean? Like, was this helpful to know? Usually we look at learning styles as visual, auditory, and kinesthetic, like I said earlier, but isn't this kind of a fun way to look at it? I know, right? I was so happy to find it. I was like, I know who I'm sharing this with. So take it, use it, send it to your friends. Very interesting. Kind of like having a bit of a crystal ball into ourselves. Now, as long as we've answered ourselves, answered this question, I should say, uh, this quiz honestly, right? Or from thinking ourselves at work. Mm -hmm. You're not happy, Evelyn? Oh, <laughs> do it again. Change the answers. <laughs> Remember that? Or choose your own adventure books. And then we're like, I don't like that ending. I'm going back to page 56. Mm -hmm. Evelyn, I would love to hear more about this. Maybe you could private chat me. Tell me about it. The idea is to keep an open mind. Make a conscious choice to learn as much as you can from the course. And this is our, like, PS. This is how you take charge of your learning. Keep an open mind, which not, it's not always easy, especially if we're dragging, you know, our load of garbage with us into a training. Could we just set it outside the door for a moment and then come back? You know that learning is strengthened by doing. So if you simply attend a course, don't make any effort to apply the skills, the ideas learned, you'll forget a lot of it, right? Mm -hmm. Cone of experience. Have any of you heard of this before, this idea of... We tend to remember 10% of what we read, 20% of what we hear, 30% of what we see, 50% of what we see and hear. So phew, hopefully you're getting 50%. You'll be able to retain 50% of our time today. Um, and then, of course, we go on into the active learning. So that's passive learning. And then you'll notice the bottom part here. 70% of what we say and write. I was that kid, right, when trying to memorize something. Um, put a put a song to it like the atomic masses. I don't even know what that means, but I've got those first twenty elements. I've got their masses totally memorized. Anyway, ninety percent of what we um, of what we do, so we're participating, we're active, and I've shown this little image in the workbook as well. Yeah, to know what type of learner they are, absolutely. I think it's very interacting with someone. The more we can know about them, the more we can adjust our communication with them or that the way that we teach them. We know that learning is strengthened by doing. So to get the most of any training course, plan to use the information immediately and repeatedly. So here are three thoughts. Tell your boss what you learned and how it will help your performance. That's kind of like a two for one. I'm amazing because I took this course. Here's what I've learned. Right? Provide feedback. Ideas and feedback could you give to your boss? Or the training organization. What did you learn? Right? Or what could have been done better? And then, of course, to follow up. Seeking out training opportunities. If it's a topic that's of interest, what more could I learn? So one of our topics we have coming up this spring is emotional intelligence, which, wow. 
mind blowing, right? And so because it's a topic that I'm passionate about, it's something that I continue to learn on as well. And so even though in this session we'll be doing kind of an intro to EI and social awareness, know that there's so much more out there. So often people will say, well, oh man, I wish I could learn more. You can, <laughs> right? And we'll give you some tips and ideas in that session on how to do it. We want to keep our skills up to date. It keeps us relevant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Absolutely. laughs> Meowth. I think that that's what yours would be. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> yeah, so understanding what's expected of us in a training. And I hope that that's been clear for all of you that one of the things that we hope and secretly expect is this kind of interaction and banter. We take responsibility for understanding in detail the priorities and what would look like a success. And so that's part of our um, surveys that we do at the beginning of our longer sessions. That's part of this, to understand, yeah, to be able to ask those clarifying questions. We should really think of an online meeting like any other meeting. Okay, so for example, we're in an online meeting. Are we gonna be shutting off our camera to eat a sandwich? or slam our M&Ms, or you know, check our online poker game. No, we're not doing those things in a regular meeting, so why would we do it in an online meeting? So earlier today we had talked about, sometimes we get fatigued from staring, right? Staring at a screen. Um, that could be part of that fatigue too, because how much do we actually just sit and stare at the upper half of someone's body? Right, we don't do that normally. We maybe look away, but if I look away, you might be wondering, is there a predator in the room? Does she have a newborn kitten? Like, what's happening? And so that may even lead us to being distracted. Now, we're not robots. I know you're not robots. I know you're real humans, right? So we treat each other like we're that, giving that respect that we would have around a conference table as much as we would in this setting as well. And we respect the people. We respect the meeting. Dress code punctuality, preparation. These aren't just buzzwords, right? These are things that we should be doing actively to take charge of our learning. So even in an online learning situation or meeting, demonstrate that you respect their time just as you would respect your own. It can be easy to be like, eh, I don't know, I still got 30 seconds. I guess I could perform my computer updates. We'll talk about that in just a sec. Give attention to get attention. So even when you don't have the floor, right now. <laughs> Try to remain an active listener who's engaged with what's happening, asking those clarifying cl questions. Make sure we're on the same page. Show that you're conscious of other people. And if you interrupt, which may happen with our new platform, right? We may end up talking over one another. Um, this sort of thing, that's okay. I think that that will happen naturally, especially if we don't have cameras on and we're not like, hey, I have a comment. We're just blurting out. I'm okay with that. But <laughs> You may have to use excuse me or pardon me or forgive me or whatever. I'm sorry I'm making you repeat yourself is just as valuable to say. My apologies. And there's no penalty for being polite. In fact, we'll probably get a lot further with using our manners. What about being a listener and then coming up with some key questions? So we draw up a list of the answers we need to move forward. Don't let the meeting end until you've asked them. Is there an opportunity, and I don't know, maybe depending on the situation, to submit these questions to our trainer beforehand? Something that I'm hoping to get out. And that's sometimes, well, we, we ask that. What are you hoping to gain? And I know in person it's really easy because I write it up on the flip chart paper and this sort of thing. Because I want to know that what we're hitting on today is something that you are hoping to get. Now, the truth is the tech can be a little bit tricky. <laughs> Has anybody experienced this? What are you doing to be accountable for your experience? So sometimes we have folks that have challenges with the tech, whether that's audio or microphone settings. <laughs> Rochelle knows this inside and out. She lives this a lot um, and helping other people. Now, assessing, accessing online training is a beneficial way for us to receive the learning support while upgrading our skills. So having that basic knowledge of digital training will help us on our path to success. So an online meeting comes with its own little twist, as we know, <laughs> um, means you're going to have to be your own tech support sometimes. Now, 
at WAM, we really try hard to have that tech support in the wings as we've learned along the way the importance of it. So as a facilitator, my role is to bring the information and to encourage conversation. But if someone has a tech problem, it can really take you off off the rails. And so we're so thankful to have Rochelle and Paula with us in the wings here today in case anybody does have some tech issues. Okay, close and reopen windows. Yes, right? Yeah, we've learned maybe some different ways of, of handling our tech. What about your last system update? Have you tested your hardware? A friend of mine had this happen not that long ago, where computer updates started at 7 and didn't end until 10 o'clock. Yes, the session starts 10 o'clock. Oh, now, by the way, I have to reboot my computer three times. Have you tested the hardware? Do you know the settings of your camera and your mic? Because each system can be a bit different. For example, when I've used Skype, it hijacked my microphone. And because I didn't close the program all the way, I no longer had a mic for some of my other meetings, like Zoom or the Any meetings, all of the things, right? Should I invest in an external microphone? We kind of touched on that earlier. Do the system updates. Do them five seconds before your meeting, maybe the day before. And take time to learn the tech. This may be watching tutorials. So if it's a different platform for you, or you're coming into this in a, in a different way, or you're having to teach someone the tech, watch a tutorial so that you'll be able to have that information a bit easier. We've learned, and maybe you have as well, that many of the platforms are similar, but each of them has a few unique pieces. So I wanted to share a few of my favorite things about each one. And Skype, I forgot to put in there, so apologies. Um, I don't use it a lot. I only use it once or twice a month, and so that's why it was off my radar. Any meeting, I love the emojis. It's a great way for us to have fun, like we said earlier. GoToMeeting is so easy to use. You just click, it's just simple, um, straightforward. When you use the app on your laptop, you can keep your chat function up, you can have sharing your screen, all of the things. It's easy to share your internal um, audio as well. So if you're sharing a video, you can just click share device audio and away you go. Same thing with Zoom. I love Zoom breakout rooms, like I said earlier. We'll have that with Collaborate where we can go in and break out sessions and work on um, activities in a smaller group. Collaborate, lots of people can join, and we can have multiple meetings going on at one time. WebEx, again, kind of like GoToMeeting, super straightforward. Teams, easy to share documents. I know that my kids are on Teams all the time for school. I've used Teams in workplaces as well for meetings. Again, all of these are so similar. It's just great. Now, to ensure our sessions are running smoothly, strong internet connection, hello, we know that pain, don't we? Having a computer or a laptop is preferable. We can join on remotely. However, some of us have learned when we do that, um, it's trickier to use the chat function. We're flipping between screens. I know that that's true for myself when I use Zoom or even on any meeting. And Skype, good point. Good, good to give others control of your computer. That's pretty cool, too. Maybe you'll need Adobe, Microsoft Office, a webcam, something either internal or external. You may even need a long-distance phone plan. Some of them have 1-800 numbers we can call in. We've experienced that where someone's camera or sorry, their microphone isn't working. So what do we do? We call in. I had that in one of my sessions 30 seconds before we launched. I no longer could turn my microphone on on my computer. So no problem, I just grab my phone and I dial in that way. So there's always ways that we can work around. Update your Chrome or Firefox. I find Chrome the best so far personally to use and those updates right for the run. We would love moving forward to have cameras on. A couple of reasons. One, you're cute, we wanna see your face. Body language, 55% of how we receive a message. Also, keeps us honest, doesn't it? <laughs> keeps us maybe engaged. Preferably in a well-lit area to make sure that your camera um, screen is being well. Now, these are the hard realities of online meetings, right? Me and my profile pic versus me in the Zoom meeting. Oh man, my Zoom meeting uh, profile pic is so cute. And then the reality is this. 
discussion. Um, we also hear not muting the mic is the new reply all. And as a facilitator, I have had to mute people. I don't want to shut your voice off. But when you're carrying on another conversation, or in one meeting I was in, you guys, workplace meeting, one of the participants was talking about taking a new job offer in the meeting with their boss there. So mute your mic. <laughs> Ooh, talk about awkward, right? I was like, okay, I think we better close this meeting right now because the person just didn't get that we were screaming, shut your mic off. And then, of course, Zoom meeting audio only, <laughs> Zoom meeting with video. Love that image. So fun. I, I couldn't stop myself, guys. <laughs> me focusing on the Zoom class, me checking my angles to make sure I look hot, right? Um, and this is another one, too. We're trying to leave the meeting, and it's just not working, right? We're struggling. Too funny. Now, maybe you saw this in another session. I had to pull it back. Eight seconds, the average attention span of a human, down from 12 seconds in 2000. I can't even imagine post pan what this number is going to look like. Three, maybe, if that. We mentioned this before. You don't have to be talking 80% of the time to be an active contributor, but you do need to be active 100%. So, what do we do? Rochelle, you said it. Take notes, right? Write it down. It can increase how much we retain from the meetings, help us come up with specific points, questions for follow up. Say what? active listening or as i prefer to call it listening right it's more than just paying attention again this idea of an active role in ensuring that we're retaining and part of it too is goes back to respect now if we're an indirect communicator maybe we're the type of person that likes to sit back and just you know pop some popcorn watch the show it's important for you to have a voice right if people won't know where you stand unless you tell them so by not saying anything still saying something so be willing to speak and then those of us that you know maybe speak first think before you speak how about that so our netiquette yes there's a name for it our dress code right be dressed put some pants on how many of these uh commercials we've seen lately where you know someone's in the background in their undies i had that happen my son came up Thankfully, it was just with my coworkers, and it wasn't a situation like this. And he waltzes by in his peggy ladies, right? Not really appropriate. What can people see in the view, right? Let's not do bedroom or bathroom situations, friends. And we say it for a reason, okay? Some people would even say get any rid of any personal photos or any distraction in the background. Like imagine this in the background. <laughs> Uh, Dana, I think you said it, those distractions, right? People, pets, stay off your phone. And again, if you could just mute yourself, that'd be great. Can you tell which one of mine <laughs> is a beef, right? It may be tempting to check our inbox, especially if we're getting those notifications in a meeting. And, right, things come up. I totally get it. But be where your feet are, stay present. You might miss out on a learning opportunity, or my favorite is, um, can you repeat the question again? <laughs> I was in a carrying on. <laughs> yes. It's so true. It's hurting all of us, right? And remember, when using your webcam, use that attentive body language, sit up straight, eliminate movements that distract, and try not to let your eyes wander. It's tricky, though, isn't it? Now, I'm just going to ask Rochelle to hop in or pop our link back in just before we close here to get um, our wrap-up survey. <laughs> there we are. Stand by for the link. I wanted to share this quote with you, though. Let your internet engagement show your inner beauty through online actions with netiquette. Isn't that a fun word? Really showing that respect that we would offer in a meeting in person, that we do that online. So taking away any of those distractions, like some of the ones that we've learned the hard way, but what about those ones that maybe we're still doing because we just enjoy it, right? I enjoy texting my friends or taking selfies because, wow, the lighting's really great in here. Let's just eliminate that. Rochelle. Harry, this hurts. This part hurts. You're reading all of our mail. I know, right? 
guilty as accused. <laughs> totally. We do want to let you finish, Carrie, with the last word and the last bits of inspiration. But before we do that, I just popped into the chat the post workshop survey. So this is a survey almost identical to the one we just completed before we started. And we'd love to just see how you feel now about some of the content. So go ahead, click on that link. It's going to take you into another tab. I think there's five questions. Just point and click. It's all anonymous. I'm going to wait in the wings here and I can see, I can't see who you are, but I can just see that they're getting done. So I'll give you an update in a moment. So go ahead now, Carrie, take a big pause and we are going to do our responsive surveys for you here. Woohoo, I see lots of people are fast and on it. I'm just waiting for two more. Thank you so much for the ones who completed. Don't go check your email. We're not done yet. <laughs> Hang tight. Now I am just because you said it. Anybody do time blocking with their email? It takes so much discipline, but when I do it, I feel so great about just having set times that I check the email. Good I for you. Really hard. Yeah, it's, it's a game changer. That's a New Year's resolution that we do every week, and that's okay. <laughs> I'm just waiting for one more survey, and then I'll pass the floor back to Carrie. It is hard to get used to, for sure, especially if we're so like. Someone needs me, I need to reply. And we have to train our colleagues too, right? That maybe maybe we don't check email all day long and we do time block and, and it's a culture shift. 100%, that's a really good point. Yeah, then there's nothing wrong with telling people, hey, by the way, had that conversation. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, well, I want to thank those who've been able to complete the survey so far. I'm waiting for one more, so feel free to have that in the other tab you have going, even though we're supposed to be focused only on this tab. We just learned yeah, that. Yeah, no, focus on that tab for sure. <laughs> but keep it going in the other tab and finish it up because it sure helps us uh, develop and deepen content as we go along. Uh, back to you, Carrie. Thanks, Rochelle. Thanks, everybody, too, for your participation today. I'm excited to introduce that new platform to you um, coming up right away. Uh, you'll know when you get emails because it'll sound and look a little bit different. We've also included with that some troubleshooting and tech support with the Collaborate. I want to thank you again for joining. Please check out our offerings at webinterlake.ca. And friends, let's go forth and be awesome and try not to be distracted in our online meeting. Thank